¿Cómo están? Bienvenidos al Santuario de los Cómics, pero no estamos en el Santuario de los Cómics. Hoy estamos en el Robert E. Howard Days, los días de Robert E. Howard, el creador de Conan el Bárbaro. Y estamos justamente atrás de nosotros, está la casa de Robert E. Howard, pero también tenemos al escritor Jim Sub de la nueva serie de, de Conan el Bárbaro de Titan Comics, y lo tenemos aquí. Así que vamos a hacer el switch para inglés y luego ponemos la traducción con subtítulos en español. Okay, amigos. So, thank you so much, Jim, oh, for thank being you. here. Nice to meet you. Absolutely. Yeah, nice to meet you. It's been a long time that yes. I had first contact you. Remember that when you <laughs> with, with, with Titan Comics first time uh, uh, launched for well, the first time, but uh, Titan Comics So uh, I remember I I was in touch with you. Uh, we could do an interview at that moment. Right. And then we postponed it for later, <laughs> then Comic Con, and blah, blah, blah. And finally, we're here. And it's Howard taken is. a while. It's taken a while. But finally, we were able to make all oh, the stars go into alignment. Exactly. I'm glad it's worked out. And this is a great oh, place to do it. I'm going to tell you. Of course. Of course. Definitely. This is your first time to cross This is my first time to cross This is Robert Howard. I've been, uh, you know, so many years I've heard about this. Oh, sure. But this is the first time. And I'm glad that you're here. Yeah, it's my first time as well. Oh, so it's, uh, it feels really special. You know, uh, Howard Days is this celebration that's been going on since 1986. A group of fans started to gather here at Robert E. Howard's house and uh, celebrate the man and his work. The first Howard Days, I think there were less than 12 people. Uh -huh. And now, you know. The most famous of which is. And the Barbarian. And so, it, it, it's yeah. an incredible time. It's it, really good. It cool. is. It is. So now, since the beginning, I tried to uh, contact you because mm. I was wondering how a new editorial company of comic books is going to relaunch uh, so uh, um, mm. a great character. Right. Like persons, all the fans already know him, and now he's going to be created in a different focus. I mean, what's amazing, and you know, Conan has been around for over 90 years in books, 50 years in comics. So there's an incredible legacy there, but it's sort of intimidating because you have to try and both live up to that legacy, but also make something to excite new readers or to excite old readers. You can't just tell the same stories over and over again. You have to do something unexpected. You have to do something new. Okay. And that's a scary balancing act, trying to find a new path forward without losing what makes a character feel the way they should, you know? Totally agree. But the, the, the thing is, since Marvel Comics got the license mm. for a few years, yes. then you, it was the first time for you to, to uh, collaborate right. with a group of artists uh, writing Conan. It was the first time I, I, I approached I, Conan, the Barbarian well, belongs to more in the best. My first time writing Conan was actually at Dark Horse. I, Gail Simone and I did... Uh, uh, Red Sonia Conan crossover book at Dark Horse in 2015, and I thought that would be the only chance I'd ever get to write Conan. And I had an incredible time working with her and collaborating. Uh, Dan Panosian and Randy Green were the artists, and they were amazing. And then when Marvel got Conan back, I had the chance to write. Uh, they asked me if I would be part of the Avengers event that brought Conan in. Okay. But I wanted to write the character pure in the Hyborian Age. I, no offense to Red Sonja, but I wanted that original, just him on his own, those kinds of classic stories. Right. And so I finally had the chance to do that for the first time at Marvel. Uh, with the, They did a savage sort of Conan series in full color, and I wrote a three-part story called The Gambler. So it was about Conan in this, he ends up in this gambling hall where you can bet your life away, and uh, danger and threats, and he can't just kill the problem, he has to solve these mysteries that are happening around him. 
I wanted it to have this kind of pulpy feel, this weird tails kind of vibe. And um, again, I thought that would be my last chance to write Conan. <laughs> and I, I put that story together and that was the one that grabbed the attention of Fred Malmberg. Mm -hmm. the, he's in charge of Murdoch Signatures who manages the Robert E. Howard Character Library. And they really paid attention to that story. So what I thought was my last story became my audition I to see. do a lot more. And so from there on, I did uh, the Serpent War, the Serpent War crossover miniseries. I took over the regular monthly series. Uh, we hit the pandemic, and that made things very, very stressful and difficult yes. for everybody. And on the other side of that, Marvel's publishing plans had changed, and they decided they were going to wrap up and I did the best I could, and I, I wrote some stories I'm really proud of, but it was just the circumstances that they were under. Uh -huh. And so getting the chance to start fresh and working with Heroic Signatures directly has been so amazing because we were able to really talk directly and sort of go, what are the most important qualities of this character? What are the things we have to make sure we do not lose and what are the things that we can do to grab old readers and new, you know? Yes, I have an idea, because uh, since I started reading this, uh, the, way I, the, the way I see it is it contains, it's a, it contains new blood. Yeah. Because uh, Rob De La Torre mm. and you are the blood, the new oh, blood, but, but the DNA yeah. is still Robert E. Howard. It is, so we try uh -huh. to go back to that real core and take some of the best qualities of our favorite comics over the years, whether that's Big John Buscema, Roy Thomas, or you know, Alfredo Alcala and Ernie Chan, or you know, uh, uh, Barry Windsor Smith, that those things are all part of this bigger pop culture image of Conan in the comics. Sure. And we don't want to just copy those things, but we don't want to forget why they were so cool. And so you look at Rob's phenomenal artwork, and you can see the influences of John, but you see also Frazetta, and you see how Foster is yeah. his page layouts. But you see himself, he is his own artist as well. And his excitement and his energy for this character and this world is coming through on every single page. And we inspire you know each other. I write a really exciting story, and then he's excited to draw it. And then okay. I see those pages, and I've got to put down dialogue and text that lives up to that art. Otherwise, how could I live with myself? It's so beautiful, <laughs> and it's so amazing. You know, same thing with Doug Braithwaite, same thing with Jonas Sharp. These artists uh -huh. that I've had a chance to work with at, on the new Titan run, they're all so skilled. And, you know, this character that we love deserves the best. He deserves the best quality, the most excitement that we can muster and put on the page. And and then well, one of my questions is, is uh, how was the approach? Uh, I mean, there's some classical stories of Conan, like Red Nails. Yes. Like, like, uh, uh, Tower, uh, of the the Tower of the Elephant. Tower of the Elephant. God okay. in the Bowl. Okay. Ross Giant's Daughter. We can, we can name it. All of them. All of But the thing is, how did you push stories around those classics? But without losing the classic. Right, so our core is those original stories. Those are the canon. Those are the, the continuity. Okay. And we know that they all happen. Everything else in between is our, our choice, how we connect them together or how we use them. And so I wanted to make sure that so you want to feel, don't want to fill the gap. You know what, yeah, we, but, but not like fill in the gaps like it's it's boring material that happens before something exciting, oh, okay. that there's always exciting things happening, that there's always amazing things happening. But there's also, if you keep in mind, Robert E. Howard wrote over 200 short stories. Mm -hmm. There's only 20-something Conan stories. Ten times as much material he wrote in other pulps. He wrote horror stories and western stories and boxing. mysteries and noir and boxing yeah. stories. And some of those stories, many of them have a super natural They have weird tales. That's why so, that as well is that for us, we didn't want to super call the conqueror from Conan, that that is the Thurian Age leads to the Hyborian Age. Got and it. so, everything that's in the Thurian Age, well, that's part of the story too. So, yes. that means Tulsa Doom's in play. So, that means 
you know, the black stones in play. So that means all these other horror stories and supernatural stories that Robert E. Howard wrote, that he himself started to connect together. Okay. There's a famous story called Kings of the Night. Kings of the Night. And yeah. Bren McNorn summons Poe from the past to fight in a war with him. We're not making up a shared universe. The shared universe was already there. It's already there. Uh -huh. We're just going to tie more things into a cool tapestry and make them all feel like they fit together. This very powerful kind of pulp epic uh -huh. that we can build out. Uh, you know, when Roy was doing the series at Marvel back in the 70s, he would take a Robert E. Howard story, like a Western, and he would take out all the cowboy elements and then he would put Conan in it and use the basic plot. You know, that's where you actually get um, Red Sonja, Red is Sonja. he took Shadow Over the Vulture and Red Sonja of Rogatino and he made her in the Hyborian Age, mm -hmm. you know? So he his solution to the problem was Take a Robert E. Howard story and make it a Hyborian story. And my solution is, no, no, all those stories happen where they happen, when they happen, and they are affected by each other. Oh, I see. And so it's a, not the same mindset, but I think a similar hope that these things can be bigger, that we can do more cool things. I see the And point. now you have a modern audience that's used to time travel and shared universes uh -huh. and multiple genres interacting with each other. So let's use that to their advantage, and let's try and keep as much of the source material of something like uh, the noir stories, the mystery stories, the horror stories, and imbue them and weave them into the books. So Conan will always be in the Hyborian Age, but we tease something like Blackstone. Blackstone is, there's literally a horror story by Robert E. Howard called mm -hmm. The Blackstone, and it's like a, a Lovecraftian horror creepy story but he uses Blackstone in a Cull story as well, and he uses Blackstone in a Kerwin and Conrad story. It's this material, this mysterious alien material that, it's like a, uh, do you know the term MacGuffin? MacGuffin, yeah. It's an occult MacGuffin. Uh -huh. You can use it to cast spells or trap things or to, to, to make supernatural things happen. Uh -huh. But there's never been Blackstone in a Conan story before. So now we're um, going to use it as that MacGuffin to start connecting pieces together, you know? See. So, did you, did you have this idea of tying all these characters since uh, before Titan? Because I, the Serpent War... Right, the so Serpent War Serpent was War. almost like... It was something that, that Fred Malmberg definitely wanted and I was excited about because I love these other characters. Solomon Cain is so cool and Dark Agnes is so fascinating and interesting and that they those characters have potential but they don't have the pop culture uh, cachet of Conan, but we can use him to raise them up and to bring that to a bigger audience. But here's what's really important. The main monthly Conan the Barbarian book is always in the Hyborian Age. None of this crossover stuff happens in the monthly book. Okay. We set up slot lines and iconography and mythology that we use in things like Battle of the Blackstone. Uh -huh. But the main book, if you just read it month to month to month, you just get good, awesome adventure in the Hyborian Age or the Thurian Age, the very connected barbarian kind of stories with the character you love. But if you want to see more of the Robert E. Howard stuff, we've got things like the Blackstone miniseries or Savage Sword where you can read a Solomon Cain story or you're going to see more of these kind of pieces coming together. So it's sort of hopefully the best of both worlds. Uh -huh. That if you're an old school opponent collector and all you want is... Conan, 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 Conan the Barbarian. You just read that monthly book and we'll give you your money's worth every month, I promise. Okay. But if you want a little more, we got some other cool stuff. So it's a way to expand the yeah. universe of Conan. And, and hopefully bring more people to Howard's works because he is more than, he's the father of sword and sorcery. Uh -huh. And that's very precious, but he's more than sword and sorcery. It is more. He is a phenomenal, you know, he was a phenomenal talent. He was a poet and he was a, you know, Westerns, and even comedy kind of stories that I think people don't realize how good they are because for better or for worse, this character has overshadowed everything else. And I say, yes, absolutely. Conan is my favorite and I'm thrilled to bring you Sword and Sorcery and I'll put my all into it. But don't forget about this. Uh, this course. stuff's cool too. And that's why you're bringing 
all these characters in this new story that right. you're going to develop this fall. Right, it's right. Gonna, we're going to see those comic books, but it's it. not inside the comic. No, the it's regular a separate comic. miniseries. So separate. it's called Battle of the Black Stone. And because we've already revealed who's in it, I can now say. Uh -huh. yeah. So we've got, you know, Solomon Kane, Solomon Kane. Dark Agnes, uh, Kirwin and Conrad. Uh -huh. They're always uh, together, a pair. Uh, and Elborak. then we've got El Borak, El Borak. right? Yeah. Uh, and James Allison. James Allison. And James Allison, like in Circuit War, he's such an interesting character because he already transcends time. Mm -hmm. He lives multiple lives and he remembers those lives. And one of those lives is in the Hyborian Age. And one of those lives is in the Thurian Age. And he has seen it all and experienced it and, and doesn't quite know what is real and what is a dream. Okay. You know? Okay. But that reflects, you know, these stories and these themes, they, they're, they're cycles. You know, there's, uh, there's a very famous Cole story. Uh, uh, those in Zoom, the, the, the mirrors, you know, Cole absorbs himself and he stares into the mirror and he uh -huh. sees alternate lives of himself. Okay. And then he realizes that maybe the person that's looking in the mirror is not the real one. Maybe the real one is one of the reflections. Okay. So these kinds of things, whether it's James Allison or Cole, these are things that Howard was always thinking about. And he was using them multiple times civilization versus barbarism you know who can you trust the civilized man will stab you in the back or the barbarian who tells you you're going to die oh my god right? that's a tough it's tough to decide it's amazing way. though that's what's so cool about these stories is that these themes keep coming up over and over again and it's our job hopefully to try to bring them to new it's our job to bring them to new audiences uh -huh. and to give them hopefully an appreciation for that there's more depth to these than just Kill a wizard and save save the princess. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, let me tell you something. A, in Mexico, we have a lot of fans and uh, of uh, gym sub fans. Well, thank because you. Because everybody knows about the new relaunch of Conan the Barbarian. Right. And Conan the Barbarian has been in Mexico so 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 long time. Mm. I don't know if you know about this story. The first comic book created in the world. Oh, Jeff Shanks is telling me about it. Okay. That it was like, yeah, an unofficial... It was Mexican, non-official, based so on amazing. the Queen of the Black. That's uh, right. Uh, Queen of the Black. I think Coast, he told me, right? and in it, in it, Belitz, the main character, and Conan's like the second, sidekick. Yes, yeah, the sidekick. And he's got blonde hair, I think. Okay. It's well, crazy. We, well uh, in Mexico, we had that, obviously, a long time ago. This is comic books from the mid-50s and 60s. And then, um, you know, playing, uh, obviously, but in Mexico, everybody gets hooked on right. Conan the Barbarian. And then there came the Marvel time, the Marvel yep. Age, and they have those comics published there from Roy Thomas yep. and John Buscema and, and, and uh, Darwin Smith. So it, it became very popular. Now, uh, we start with a different company there in the middle of the I and, uh, in the 80s, okay. uh, the Savage Sword of Conan, right. but it was like, oh, you already have from yesterday uh, an example, you know, of yeah, the yeah, comic the book, little ones. Uh, the little ones, so there's, um, uh, you know, that's the way we, we meet the, the Savage Sword of Conan, right. so, for, but at a certain point we stopped getting more new stories of Conan, oh, until, until Titan Conan I didn't come. It's oh, so this is the first in a long time. In a long time, yes. Amazing. The, the, the Amazing. Only reruns from you know the the reprints and the reprints of the omnibuses. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That, that's old story. The thing is, uh, uh, there's a um, there's a huge, huge uh, horde of fans. Amazing. Uh, of, of Conan, and um, I would like to know what do you think if now that you're writing Conan the Barbarian and we have the Blackstone or any, right. or, the, or any kind of magic, so you can be face to face with Robert E. Howard, <laughs> and then you tell me, "Hey, I'm writing your stories, and I continue telling your stories of Conan and right. the other characters." I, what do you think he's gonna? I can't fathom, and I would never want to speak for. I don't want to speak sure. for the dead. I don't want to speak for the living either. Uh -huh. Someone else, but I think, you know, when when Howard passed, his career was just starting to really climb. The Conan stories were becoming popular, uh -huh. and he was starting to get more traction with his work. And I think any artist, any writer, any creative person, hopefully, we want we want what we make to last. We want to make something that that affects you now yeah. and affects people in the future. 
Sure. After we're gone. Sure. And we are here a hundred years <laughs> later. And we're affected by it. We're at this guy's house. We're here. This Why did we come to Texas? <laughs> uh -huh. Because we were affected by it. Because it touched us and it spoke to us. And we still care. Do you know what I mean? And that's a really special thing. And so I can't, I can't say what Howard would, would say. But all I know is that hopefully as an artist and as a creator, he would be touched to know that people still read and still care and still talk and still want that feeling they got the first time that they read going. Jim, let me add something. I think he will be proud of your work. Thank you. I, 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 I really, really think so. Thank and you. I'm so happy. It's a pleasure. I thank you. Thank you for, for the, the viewers of uh, Santuario wow. de los Comics. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me say something. Okay. None of this stuff happens without the readership. You guys are so, so important. When you read, when you share with each other, when you tell other people to buy the series or you buy it as a gift and you give it to your friends and family, that's what makes the fan base grow. So thank you. You guys have made my dreams come true and I couldn't ask for more. Our dreams are come true when the moment we meet you right here oh, at uh, Robert E. Howard, uh, Days, and uh, we should probably meet you. Oh, we want to stay in touch. How yeah. about we can make some uh, live uh, Facebook uh, That'd be great. from you from Canada Amazing. and from Tijuana, so in Mexico. So. North and South. The That's North right. and South. So, so, do you think that is that possible? Great. Of course. Thank you so Sir, much. Thank you. I, I'm so proud to the change your hands, to know you, and uh, and then talk about uh, our favorite barbarian. Our Amigos favorite. del Santuario de los Comics, Jim Sub está aquí en Texas, en Crossplanes, en la casa de Robert E. Howard. Muchas gracias, amigos.